So today we're working on solving quadratic formulas and I'm going to start off with a quadratic equation. Just as a review, you might not have remembered it from high school. You said everything equal to zero and then the term in front of x squared is a, in front of x is b, and then you got a c. And this is the quadratic equation which will be given on an exam. You just need to know how to use it. So let's plug in and see how this works. We've got negative b which in our case would be 468 positive, okay, see A, B, and C are all labeled, plus or minus the square root of B squared, 468 squared minus 4 times A times C, okay, so you should be able to set that up and divide it by 2A. There's my quadratic equation, and I would expect you to be able to solve this. Uh, let me put in a little bit of the math for you. So I ended up with 468 plus or minus, and then everything under the square root turned out to be 128.686 divided by 2 times 211, which is just 222. Okay, so that's what I get. You can see anytime you're solving a quadratic uh, equation, you're going to have two possible answers. And I got... 1.528 and I got 2.688. In math, you can't distinguish between either answer and both answers are correct. However, in chemistry, one of these is going to be correct and one's not. You're actually going to see this calculation in class and the chemistry is going to tell us which one of these two answers is the right answer. So that's your quadratic formula you uh, will get two answers and here they are. Now, now let's do a different method of solving and there's actually multiple ways you can solve any uh, quadratic equation. Uh, you can just use algebra if you want, but this method is called successive approximation. I don't talk about it too much in class, but some students like it. Here's how it works and it can be a little tricky sometimes, but basically you set one of the values equal to zero. Uh, and, and there can be a number of initial guesses, but let's say you set this equal to zero. And then if this is gone, you solve for this x. And I did that just on my calculator right here. And this is the number I got. You can try this along with me. And if you have a, a, like a TI or a programmable calculator, you don't need a program in it, but you can save this equation in there and keep plugging and getting the answers. It goes pretty fast, actually. So I solve for that, and then I put that number in here instead of zero the second time. And then I solve for this x again, and I got this number. Then, and you can try this on your calculator. Then I took this number, and I plugged it in here again. And I solved for this x, and I got this 1.3849 number. And I did that actually on my calculator about 20 times. I just take the answer from here, and I plug it into this one. What happens is, over time, the, this uh, successive guessing gets you to actually one of the answers. And so on my calculator, I got 1.528, which is what we got from the quadratic equation. And those of you who uh, know how to use your calculator and write the equation in can actually do this pretty quickly and potentially save a little bit of time off using the quadratic. 